Uh, Ye was on Drink Champs, mm-hmm. and um, I looked up and I realized that everybody lost their damn mind after that show came out. It stressed out everybody. It stressed out Ye, stressed out Nori, stressed out Revolt, stressed out everybody, man. I mean, what were your thoughts about it? That was a chosen stress. Ooh. That was, they, they, they could have stopped that. <laughs> 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 it's uh, like I say, it's, a, it's it's one of them decision making moments to where they had a real boardroom decision on, hey, should we release this? Mm-hmm. Should we edit this? Mm-hmm. Um, how bad is it? Do it really hurt that bad? Is it a scar, or is he really just getting something off his chest? And if it's gonna scar. It's another decision. Hey, who's going to take this? Sean Combs, are you going to take the blow? Nori, are you going to take the blow? Hmm, what if we, I think the guy who said it may take the blow. But you just never know. All you could do is just guess. You know, and even though Sean Combs had that disclaimer at the beginning, yes, that's a disclaimer to say, saying that these thoughts and opinions are not uh, based off of the thoughts of, you know, y'all know what I mean, yeah. of Sean Comb and Revolt yeah. TV. But y'all still decided to release that to the masses. Because mm. what, that's like a day away? away? It wasn't live. No, it wasn't live. See, if it was live, it's different. Yeah. But if you recorded this and you had time to edit and think about <laughs> what's gonna happen, and you know what, you, 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 you proof went through it. And they may have took, taken out some parts that they didn't want yeah, to be heard. Yeah. So y'all chose to release it and put it out. So that's why I say that's a chosen stress and headaches. Yeah. And um, like my man Nori had to go on his um, apology, apology tour. tour. And yeah. believe me, and that was an itinerary that was already lined up mm. before Right when he decided that Kanye was going to come on his uh, platform, mm-hmm. he already lied that tour up. He knew that was coming. <laughs> he knew he was going to have to do that. That's why yeah. he jumped out there so fast. <laughs> Most apology tours happen like some a week later. You got to force him to. This do. man was out there the next day, <laughs> <laughs> like t- less than twenty four hours yeah. on apology. Hey, My man. Hey. you know. Yeah, and um, and uh, a lot of people are hot with him for 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 coming back on his words but once again man y'all that's something that y'all that's a decision that you Sean Combs and Revolt decided to do yeah like this man disrespected Sean Combs on his own platform yeah and that's why I think Sean had a chance to say hmm should I try to save Ye's face by cleaning his shit up but damn he talked about me on here too so (laughs) let me just let this shit out and let him catch that he said that about them yeah, it's my show, but yeah, just like with Nick Cannon. Yeah, whoever's over Nick Cannon, because Nick don't own the whole shit, so it's yeah. another some higher ups. Yeah, and they may have been Jewish people too. Yeah, but they made a decision to hey man, even though he's saying these things about us, let's let it be heard, mm. or let's edit this out. Like y'all, it's it's a choice now. Yeah. No, it's, if it was live, I get it. Yeah. But no, there's a, y'all have a chance to edit certain shit out. So it's a reason why they let it out. Maybe to just see if he's just going to self-destruct. Mm. I think, I think um, he disrespected uh, Gap. Mm. He's, uh, I guess he figured he's not cool with Adidas anymore. Mm-hmm. And then when he put on the White Lives Matter joint, it's almost like, oh, okay, right, well, we're about to embrace it now. We're like, oh, shit, hold on, what is that you're wearing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And when I saw that, I didn't, I was like, he's up to something. Mm-hmm. I didn't call him crazy. I didn't say, okay, what the hell is that? That's offensive. I was like, I don't know what the hell he's up to, but I wouldn't wear that. For me, it seems like he's not crazy at all. I, I don't not. get crazy vibes. Everybody wants to say mental health, mental health, nah. mental health. That man seemed like a regular person, logically speaking, and if mental health is really that serious, then all of us are crazy. All man. of us. And I remember I said that yeah. a while back. So that's why, and honestly, I would say now one thing, and I think every athlete, every entertainer or artist or a few people, man, um, when you're put in positions where you speak into the masses, you know what I mean, on something that's definitely going to be broadcasted to the world, you know, once you hit enter, man, that shit is it's covering oh, yeah. the globe at that yeah. point. 
and when you hit enter after you so-called supposed to be done editing, it's out there. You make yep. it come back and pull it, but somebody still got a copy of that one, even yep. if you try to go, well, because uh, they yep. still got a copy of some of that old, the, when they first put the clips of the revolt shit. Exactly. That you see them edit out on the three-hour version. Yep. It's like, okay, they chopped that out, but I saw that one on the last one. Exactly. So when you have a person who's not straight up trained mm -hmm. for this type of thing, what we're doing, Sometimes you'll see on Drink Champs or uh, even on um, on a few platforms like Breakfast Club or whatnot, you'll see an artist, especially if he's a new jack, and they ask him certain questions, and you'll see him look to the side. It might be that one manager or that real OG on his team saying, mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah. Oh, no, don't say that. Yeah. Or somebody in your camp, it might be a little female who run around with you, hold up a note that she done wrote <laughs> with a thick sharpie yeah. to make sure that you see this shit from 20 feet. Like, don't say that again. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think he have that around him, man, and everybody need that who's yeah. not. Because he, he, he got a lot of great things to say. Yeah. Great things. Brilliant guy. But right when you're about to say, yeah, yay, <laughs> oh, boy. And then it's like, but then he'll throw one more thing in there, and it's like, oh, shit. Come on, man. Yeah. I'm not walking out the room, but I was exactly. just about to give you a hug. Yeah. So, just got to move them words around a little better. Not, sound, mm. not trying to say make it softer. Yeah. Not trying to say make it more pleasing or appealing, yeah. but let it, you got to do this shit in chapters. Say the good, let that be for about an hour. Speak of all the positive shit. Then if you're going to get into the negative, let that have its own hour too. Yeah. Break these, you got to break the shits down in, in segments to where people uh, uh, see uh, uh, in an interview and say, okay, boom, he covered that. Oh, 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 he spoke on the bad side on this part. But when you blend all that shit together, it looks like he's all over the place. Mm. And a lot of times our minds can move like that. Yeah without structure or without that team around you or that real person to say, hey, now nah, be high, uh, take that out your show. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't do that. You know, certain artists, hey, you know, don't say that on your record no more. Mm -hmm. Stop letting, you know, stop telling the world that you didn't, that you dropped out of school in yeah. eighth grade and, and you made it as a rapper. Like, we yeah. don't want every kid around here hearing that. Okay. Feeling like I could be, become a rapper because that's what rap, I hear our community has kind of turned into that yeah. at one point to yeah. where a lot of dropouts felt like shit. They can rap. Shawty, I'm going to get them get into this rap thing. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want to work nowhere. You know what I mean? Don't want to cut no, grass. I you. They like, man, I'm going to try this rap shit. Yeah. And they looking at it like trying to do something more than it being a true passion. Exactly. Uh, something that you really love to yeah. do. So it took the artistry out the game. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't the real artistry. Hustle. Yeah. So yeah, man. But yeah, man. He um, it's 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 a lot of little moments. It's a lot of moments in that interview, man. Answer me this though, too. What kind of messes with my mind when I sit back and I watch this kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay, George Floyd's family, they say they suing for like 250, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, so his words are that powerful that you need 250 from him because of what he said. Now, if I look at you dead in the eye right now and I say, hey, Tom, the sky out here is green. Nigga, it's a bold faced lie. And you would look at me and you'd be like, yeah, this nigga tripping right now. And we would keep it moving. We would keep it moving, yeah. How can somebody be so influential to the point to where they can't even say whatever the hell they want to say? And that is bad. Um, you still can say what you want to say. It's just the fact that people are going to try to sue you. And, and, and the thing about it, you got some hungry-ass attorneys out there mm. who feel like, hey, did you just hear that? He just said, and the family might didn't even know that they can file a suit. Yeah. It may be one attorney who feel like, oh, did you see what just printed up? He said something about your uncle. He said something about your dad. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The family might would have, like you say, would have been like, oh, man, he's tripping, you know, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it take that attorney to come and put that battery under their back and say, hey, man. Yeah. It's a check attached to that. You can sue this black man. Yeah. Black lady. Yeah. Like, you could. Get two fifty from him, and and that 
to a certain degree is uh, if that happened, that should just kind of set us back as a people yep. all over again. That don't look good, man. It don't. To to go and sue this brother for 250. Okay, yeah, he did say some words, but is it really worth, it's worth going 250. and trying to hit? Like, wow, y'all look kind of bad even reaching in that bag like that, too, for trying to sue that man for that. With all the things that have been going on out here, there's a lot of things that went around that whole thing with Floyd, the way they... It's a lot of other folks who y'all need to be filing some suits yeah. on. You know, class action, uh, what it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like after this shit over? It's civil out. Civil, civil, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like, okay, so instead of coming at the people who were really around it, like the other cops who sat there and watched. Yeah. Y'all fell back on that. But now that this black man has said just with words, which we still don't know what type of research he's done. Yeah. Now, if there's some research out there now that, that could be shown and proven from some type of uh, medical affiliates or whatnot to show, hey, hey, he did have a certain amount of whatever in his system, but to say that that knee wasn't on his neck, yeah, it yeah, was no, on his exactly. neck. Exactly. You can't say it was kind of on somebody's neck. We all saw the video, okay? Yeah, and he was like, you know, what he say when he was saying mama, that was the girlfriend's name or whatnot. Yeah. That he wasn't calling for his mom. Mm-hmm. I hear all that, but it's still, it's a time for that conversation. A lot of that, see, certain shit I would say should be discussed maybe in the, in the, in the, in the barbershop uh-huh. with no phones on. Exactly. With everybody sitting in there getting their line up, man, you know, back and forth conversation. No Thanks. cameras. Certain shit could be said, but when you say certain things and you know it's going to just hit the masses. We're talking about when you hit enter, boom. Mm-hmm. The whole mm-hmm. world's going to hear this and see this. You got to really think about the words that's coming out of your mouth, man. You really do. And see, uh, Shaw just sent me a text where it said, well, uh, on CNN Entertainment, uh, Kanye West donates $2 million and pays for college tuition for George Floyd's daughter. And this was from Chloe Mellis on CNN back June 2020. He did that back then? That's what it's saying on CNN Entertainment. I'm looking at it right now. So not just a few hours ago, but you saying that back in June. On CNN, the article. That's said, what they just said. No, nah, this is from June 2020. 2020. Back when the Floyd case happened. So it say uh, Kanye West has made a $2 million donation to support the families of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor, a representative for uh, West told CNN. Uh, the donation includes funding for legal fees for Arbery and Taylor's families, along with black-owned businesses in crisis in his native Chicago and other cities. And uh, West's donation comes as demonstrations against Floyd, Arbery, and Taylor's deaths have taken place around the world. But uh, long story short, he donated money to people, man. Damn. So and this is on CNN. So those are, yeah, CNN. I mean, I don't think they're telling lies. They so since lie. he did that, yeah, that kind of, like I say, man, I wonder is that the family or just an attorney moving on that on on, on that on that on behalf of that two fifty million right now? Because I think of, um, I don't know, some people with a heart, they got you know, depending on where they coming from or how they doing financially, but if this man then funded and helped y'all out back in twenty twenty on the situation, and now he said a little something, and you want to try to sue him for two fifty. Once again, that just make us look bad as a people, bro. Like on some real scrambling, like thirsty, hungry type shit, for real. Now, what do you think about when Ye was saying that we need to work together as a community and talked about community building and stuff like that? And Jeez. why do you feel like folks just can't work together? Man, it's something about us, bro. And I've been trying to figure that shit out for a long time. Like even on the music shit. Mm. And it's all about 10 producers who would tell them, who, who could say, yeah, man, Toop told us this shit back in 2013. Mm-hmm. I was like, listen, brothers, and I'm going to throw this out again. If it ain't me, hopefully the other producers, uh, if you, groups, man, is what, what, what we got to understand. The such and such a group. Yeah. The such, whatever group. Like, Let's say that building right there, 
Yeah. If we find out that the person who owned that building is just deceased and his family or whatever just no longer wants it and it's for sale. You have, and it's sad, man, you got more of us. We're going to just try to do it through our bank mm -hmm. or with our own money. But if it was another nationality or whether it's Spanish, the Asian community, Caucasians, Jewish yeah. community, they will get together as a group yeah. and get that building. And when you pull up the thing on that, you'll be like, hmm, this building ain't, it's owned by the such and such a group. Yeah. And you'll find out that it's a team of motherfuckers yeah. who understand putting <laughs> our heads and our resources together. Yeah. And we're going to go and we're going to flip this one and we're going to do the next one. But on a lot of situations, that's why when you, it's hard to count. It's easier to count black billionaires than it is to count other nationalities because Thanks. they do it all together. Ooh. Yeah. We catching on. You see Kevin Hart, he got his crew around cool. him. All yeah. them sitting on millions. Jay, he got his crew around him. Everybody got millions. But it's been a lot of talented people in, 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 in this city, a lot of artists who just done went through so many managers to where it's never really been a solid team. Team. Yeah. The longest running team around here has been Shaka and Luda. Come on now. With no contracts. Also, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis. Exactly. Shit, you know? And um, I was trying to put something together. I'm like, hey, let's say you a music producer. I am. Shawty and Shawty. That's four of us, right? Yeah. You're known for producing Young Jeezy. Mm -hmm. I'm known for producing a lot of shit for T.I. He may be known for doing some shit for Rick Ross. He may be known for Jay-Z, right? Mm -hmm. But all of us fuck with each other. But guess what? I need to give you a folder of my beats. You give me a folder of your beats. Each one of us know different people are mm -hmm. sitting at different tables. So, And we'll get an understanding. Hey, man, if I get one of your tracks placed, I'm going to get 10%. Yeah. Vice versa. You play my beats because we don't know the same people. We yeah. living in different parts of the country. So exactly. you on the East Coast, you down South, I'm on the West Coast, other nigga on the up north. Yeah. So it's like you around totally different people. He might have a hook up on the movie shit. We might have a hook up over here on EA Sports. Yeah. You may have a hook up on um on some film and TV shit exactly. with Tyler Perry. But if we got each all of each shits in our playlist and say, damn, you know, okay, I got some, oh, I know what they looking for. You know what? Beehive makes some tracks that's kind of for exactly. what these people asking for. Boom. You're gonna, I'm gonna get a percentage off of, we'll get a percentage off of each other's placements, basically. Mm -hmm. And man, that shit would turn us into the most popular group in this music industry because we would corner the market in so many ways as a group. But a lot of us, man, we get it and just, that's why the groups can't really stick together because motherfuckers don't be thinking it's enough for everybody. You know what, Toon, what just kind of crossed my mind while you said what you said? I think there's a lot of silent partners out here. Mm -hmm. I think that the brothers that you see do want to do that, mm -hmm. but they're silent partners who's been putting a battery in their back the whole time won't allow them to do that. And that's been the, and that could be the cause of the the, the riff, the reason why folks ain't coming together. It's silent partners. Well, I'll be, folks is puppets. I'll be trying to figure this shit out. Like, hold on. Let's say if you got this uh, NBA player who just got a three hundred million dollar deal with that Hawks, this dude here just got a deal with the Falcons for fifty or seventy or hundred million, and all of us, all these different athletes are staying in this city. You mean to tell me y'all can't put y'all bread together and put a nice ass hotel together like a hard rock? I'm your advisor. I don't think you need to do that, Tom. Y'all can't not, do that. Not, not with them. You don't need to do. Now I got some people over I'm just here. Speaking but people, no, no, I got some I'm people. I'm just speaking of people who just got the but bag. But that's what period. I'm saying. Uh, I'm talking about I'm your financial advisor. Okay. Don't do that with them. Do I got that. some people over here for you to do it with. Here. Yeah, that. But go. don't do that with them. Do it with my people. So, and hey, keep the money with my people. That's what Don't it do is. it with your Don't people. Go over there. Do it with my people. So yeah, man, that's some that's some conversation. And then you don't even realize that you're supposed to have been doing it with your people the whole people, time. Yeah. When it started getting low, that's when you start trying to 
Find your people. And this advisor that went on, he on to the next athlete. He on to the next. To the next. Yeah. After your 100, now you worth uh, maybe 5 million. Come on. Yeah, he done moved on. Come on. He done closed his office. He in Vegas or somewhere now. Come on. You know, yeah, I I feel you. And that's what's been going through my mind lately because I'm thinking to myself, something's not right in our community to where it's, it's just simple mathematics. One plus one equals two. If folks come together and work together, we should all be able to win. Yeah. And there's got to be some kind of gray area or invisible something in between people that's keeping folks from working together. And I don't want to believe it's because everybody's hate us. Right. I don't want to believe our and group I self-esteem not, is that to, damn low. I try not to blame it on slavery. I, yeah. try, I try to avoid all those things. Even when you think of the re, uh, gentrification, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, in Summer Hill. Yeah, we know grandma's taxes were this much back in the 70s mm-hmm. and 60s, but and she still got this house. Mm-hmm. So now she's about to lose it because the tax is too high, so what about family members? Hey, let's pitch in to Come make on. sure we keep grandma's house over here in Grant Park. Exactly. Or, or wherever, Flatlands, whatever. I'm with like, you. You trying to tell me, yes, Grandma is complaining about the property taxes. It is too high, mm-hmm. which I think they should have some type of thing to where uh, the people who are grandfathered in should be grandfathered in on a, have a, at a set rate. Mm-hmm. But when they pass, and whoever have, that they're going to have to pay these new tax rates. Mm-hmm. But I think if a person who's 70 and over should be able to, they should, should take Let it easy ride. on them. Yeah. Let them get them extra 15, 20 years in or however many, Come you on. know. If Come they make on. it 100 and something, that's exactly. cool too. But... And after they pass, and whoever have that, now they need to be paying these new taxes. Come on. So I'm, I, I, that's why I, that's how I look at that. But right now, from where it is, yeah, man, like how the hell can a family just watch this house, watch your grandma lose this house, and this way y'all come every Thanksgiving and Christmas when y'all could have just pitched in 500 a piece extra to make sure these taxes are paid. Answer me this, Tom, during your time in the industry maneuvering and stuff like that, were there times where you saw – and you were able to experience brotherhood of a mastermind coming together to get something done. And then also, what were some of the times in which you thought it would have been a simple fix for people to come together in which they didn't? Man, there's a few situations. I spoke on it, you know. Um, shit. Ain't no telling um, if me, Tip, and Jason had, had stuck together like most crews, you know, mm-hmm. like some crews do, um, and get a and have that 10 year run that we had all yeah. together. Yeah. You know what I mean? I produced it, but I didn't have that run with them. I had my own separate thing. Yeah. My records was over there, but if it was a whole, like me, Tip, Jason, yeah. as a Grand Hustle thing, ain't no telling what, that run may still be it going. would have been cash money. A, yeah, same thing. Yeah, it would have been cash money. Right, it would have been that real strong. Yeah. Yeah, we would have been signing everything because, you know, I got the R&B era and everything. Exactly. So we would have had rap and R&B. Would have, it's a long list of things out where that could have gone, but it happens, you know? Mm-hmm. It happens. What times do you feel like you experienced that brotherhood and it went well and y'all were able to create something new that people hadn't seen before and everybody was able to prosper and benefit off of the situation? Mm. Shit, man, the closest thing I could say to that was a graduation album, mm. you know? Um, with no egos there. Um, Ye listened to everything I brought to the table. I listened to everything he brought to the table. And we started here in Atlanta and finished in New York. So we really, it was a real brotherhood and a real work situation going on. And we, we knew it was enough for everybody. You know what I mean? Wasn't no disagreements on the splits or none of that, man. Mm. Everybody played their part. That's why at the end of Big Brother, he was like, hey, man, you did this one by yourself. You know, the other ones with me and him together. He was yeah. like, that's why he was like, man, Toom killed this shit <laughs> at the end of the song. Because he was like, nigga, you, I ain't even had to touch this one, Toom, exactly. nowhere. Like, I just came in and rapped on it. Come on. And he just rapped the hook, and I told him I'd build a beat around the Big Brother hook, and that's yeah. what happened. So it's like, that's the closest thing I could really, and it's sad to say, that's the Damn. closest thing I could really see in, um, I mean, there's certain things I'm working on now outside of music as far as, you know, developing some properties. Yeah. And I've sat with different, you know, um, contractors and different builders, but it's still just been meetings. There ain't nothing really just locked yeah. in yet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So far, I'm proud of uh, Clifford Harris, though. Okay. The Trap Museum. Yes, sir. 
Trap City Cafe. Come on now. And the other shit they doing over there on Bankhead with the uh the buildings, right, the building right not not too far from the police. Okay, station, yeah, yeah. Where the Kmart used to be. Okay, yeah. Now that's about to be nice too. So some heads got together. You yeah. know, they 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 with some agreements. Hey. And, uh, it's some made <laughs> and some decisions. <laughs> hey, if we ain't fucking with each other and it's enough for you, 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 and let's break these numbers down. And they came and to go. a decision. And now you got those stage running. I heard that the food was good over there too. I haven't been Ooh. out of it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um Trap City Cafe. They say it's nice. 